really happy to announce that um, that we are just signed a an ambassadorship program with Schedulicity. Schedulicity is a scheduling app, and um, they've been kind enough to uh, to help us out this next year. Yeah, they uh, we met them in LA when we did the uh, Salon Digital Summit, and they really believed in what we were doing Mm -hmm. and how we were doing it and so they wanted to know how they can partner up with us to uh to even reach more listeners and and give what we give that's that's right so um with our uh with our partnership with uh schedulicity we will be able to reach more hairdressers and we'll be able to bring a lot more content and get to a lot more hair shows so uh hopefully we can see you guys out there in the hair shows when we're there visiting yeah and and they're going to give us some business tips uh, throughout the podcast as well and I'm so excited that you know we're partnering up with people that believe in the same things we believe in yeah no doubt uh, that that's pretty exciting so uh anyway schedulicity once again big shout out to you and uh thank you for joining your day off I'm <laughs> silly Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best bud, Tony. What's up, Tony? What's up, brother? You, man. Yeah, man. Uh, totally excited. We have a, a three-time Naha Award winner on the show today. It's amazing. Yep. And uh, I don't speak Canadian, but uh, <laughs> uh, Saskatchewan, that's where uh, this particular individual was uh, born. Dude, what is in the water at Saskatchewan? I know, right? I mean, we we've had some uh, major guests on the show from because yeah, Chris Benson. I yep. mean, not Benson. Chris uh, uh, Barron is from Saskatchewan, yep. as he said, Saskatchewan. Maddie, Maddie, and Maddie's from that area as well, right? Yeah. Let's go. Where's Gordon from? Is Gordon from there? I don't know where Gordon's from. We have to go. I don't know. I Wait. totally messed that up. It wasn't Gordon. It was Wayne. Wayne Where's Grunt. Wayne from? Wayne Run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is he from that area? Hmm. I don't I'm not know. sure. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I'm an idiot. I don't know Canadian. The country is like, just uh, as big as geography. our country. So, uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I <know>. You're leaving <laughs> but everybody in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of seems like that's the case, didn't it? Right. <laughs> that's crazy. So, uh, so on the podcast today, we have Lori Zabel. Um, I, I was very fortunate to meet Lori many, many years ago at the uh, Redkin Exchange. She's a Redkin artist um, and just an absolute killer killer <laughs> yeah, exactly i mean she's just like her, her her artistic eye is amazing and her visualization is amazing and um you know, uh, even, even dude as as i'm looking uh you know through all her stuff and all her naha stuff man i mean yeah she's insane dude i know it's kind of, it's kind of crazy isn't yeah it? And like you know I, want, I can't wait to get in there and just kind of you know see everything inside that that, uh, that, the, that little creative the, brain of hers. Oh my goodness, yeah. That's cool. Should we get in? Let's do it. <laughs> so, Miss Lori Zabel, welcome to your day off. Thank you. <laughs> you Thanks for having me. A hundred percent, man. We were we, we were pretty stoked to uh, to to be able to bring you on today. Yeah, anytime we get an artist, uh, you know that. I mean, we're excited for all of our artists, you know. But you know, you're you're three time Naha. Your your work is insane, and you know, Corey and I we were talking about having you on. Uh, yeah, we were. Pretty, pretty stoked. So, Tony said that you're from Saskatchewan. Um, were you born there, or is that just kind of where you uh, where you made your bones? No, I was I was born in Saskatchewan, and you're right. There are a few uh, really great Canadian hairdressers: um, Wayne Grund, Chris Barron. Um, we're they're all from we're all from Saskatchewan. There's not much to do in Saskatchewan but drink beer and do hair. I think so. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and then is, is Maddie from there as well? One or the other. Or both, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, Ma- Maddie definitely says both. <laughs> yeah, definitely both, yeah. <laughs> There's not much to do when it's so darn cold here for most of the year, you know. Right. That's so cool, man. <laughs> huddle in the bar and huddle in the salon. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Huddle and talk yeah. about hair. Mm-hmm. So for I mean I I think I kind of want to like I'll jump into a story real quick is that when we had Maddie Conrad on the podcast he said that he saw all these cool cats coming into the bar and uh, that he was working at and that he was just like man when I grow up I want to be one of those cool cats and um, Maddie just told me a, a couple of weeks ago that actually uh, Lori Zabel was one of those cool cats yeah you never know who you're going to affect and where that's going to happen um, yeah. Again, drinking beer and you affect people to become hairdressers. <laughs> he told me that story and it's just, I mean, honestly, you know, hairdressers, 
I always say hairdressers always meet or they know somebody who thought they were um, a cool enough to be, you know, like I want to be just like them. And I think that's, you know, that's a pretty common thing for a lot of hairdressers. Like we all know somebody, right. Mm -hmm. That, you know, came into the salon or you met them somewhere and they're like, I just want to be like you. But to hear his story was really, it was really, really amazing. Especially, I mean, look what he's done, you know, with, with his career. It's, I mean, you know, if, if we had like, little tiny bit of that i'd be pretty i'm pretty excited yeah but i don't think it had anything to do with me <laughs> <laughs> oh, well he gives you credit man yeah <laughs> at least for uh motivating him to be one of the cool kids so you grew up in saskatchewan <laughs> how did you get into the industry how did you find your way here <laughs> well i wanted to take a class in um in um well in makeup and photography and fashion and so i called the school that um that provided the class and I asked them if they would send me um, their curriculum and some student loan information and things like that. And so my uncle said, I'll help you fill out the um, student loan stuff. So I said, sure. So I gave him the paperwork and, you know, typical uncle Don looks after everything for me and he filled out all of the paperwork that the school sent, like everything. And I got a student loan, and so I went to take this class. And little did I know, he actually signed me up for cosmetology school. <laughs> I didn't. I that wasn't the plan. I just and there I was, and yeah. So it was totally by accident. And, <laughs> yeah, and I'm not a quitter, so I didn't. <laughs> so I can't go. <laughs> Thank God for us, you did. <laughs> I mean, that just I. So, fell into it you know i mean just looking at the future you know i just i'm blown away that you know this this person that really had no intention of being a hairdresser then becomes like you know one of the most awarded uh hairdressers working I, that's just that that's just that boggles the brain so i mean you clearly had like you clearly had an eye for artistry and stuff you just wanted to do it you were looking for like a makeup or or a photograph outlet yeah, I, I, I wanted to be in the fashion industry in, in some way, I guess. I just didn't really know what that was. Um, and this class sounded interesting, so I went. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm in, I was in a hair school for, it was called Hair Design Academy in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And um, in the first month of going to school, I became the school president so then I was stuck like I had to keep going to school right and it was it was great because we got to do back in that was in the late 80s and there were so many hair shows at that time and different classes and you know really crazy avant-garde stuff and fashion shows and everything back then and so we got to be a part of all of those things and being the school president I signed us us being the students up for everything we could get into <laughs> Oh God, we'd drive through a blizzard to get to every hair show there was. And of course you'd get there and they'd need a model. I mean, every hair show you go to, you, somebody needs a model. So <clears throat> my hand went up quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> right there, look at the determination, right? Just as a young and trying to make to, you know, all these different events and you're driving through blizzards, so, you know, to get there. I know, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So did you, did you, did you always have like a visualization? I was going to say visualization eye, but that seems like a, you know, whatever. But um, so did, have you always had the eye or is it something that you kind of had to mature into? Mm, well, I guess I, 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 I don't really know the answer to that. I don't think, I guess it's something you develop, mm -hmm. but I don't know that you know when you've developed it. Uh, to me, everything I, you know, I do different things and I'm, I hate everything I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, even the Nala things, I mean, the one, the first year for color, I really loved it. But everything after that, I was like, oh, I hate that, you know. And Chris Barron says, oh, you hate everything that you do. And then, you know, and then it comes to something and. And, and then you win. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> was, was Chris, uh, was Chris commenting to you? Like, like, was his comment meant as like, Laura, you just hate everything that you do. It's fine. Or was his comment like, listen, as an artist, you never find that full um, perfection. Well, I think, um, 
I think maybe maybe both, but mostly as full, uh, you know, he's just like that, you know. I'm like, well, yeah, look who's talking, you know. Why um, he does the same, he does the same thing, and um, so you know, I guess it doesn't. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree there. He he has been my mentor for uh, since 1990, and um, and I say um, soon thereafter he adopted me, so I am actually a baron. Um, kid and um, so I call him Papa Bear and um, yeah so I guess you know I kind of get that a little bit from him but I think it's you know it's just one of those things when you're striving to do better and better and better I don't know I guess I look at it and I'm like oh that's shit you know um, and then then you have to keep working at it you know it's never done I don't think right. did you and Chris um, did you work at a salon together Yes, I actually moved across Canada to work with him. I figured he was a Saskatchewan boy and I wanted to move to a bigger um, city. And so I thought, well, who's the best in all of Canada? Because that's who I'm going to go and work with. And um, it was him. So I went, uh, I went to work with him. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. And what, by the way, what a great mentor and what a great uh, Papa Bear to have, right? Oh, man. He's, he's such a sweet person. Yeah. Such a sweet soul. That's pretty awesome, man. What a great dude. So, very, very, very fortunate. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, honestly, I, I, for the industry, I feel like fortunate for the industry that Chris has entered and, and just such a respected and responsible dude in the industry as well. Yeah. How long did you stay with him? Um, I, I'm still there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, let's see. I worked with him for probably about eight eight to 10 years um, when they were developing the first Redkin um, cutting system. I w um, was his assistant. And then um, he started being on the road so often that I took over all of his clients, which was really nice. <laughs> um, and then he, well, actually I probably worked with him for about four or five months. And then he signed me up to take training um, to be a Redkin artist. And um, it, be, uh, it sounds like people just signed me up for a lot of things in my life, which has kind of been one of those things. You, um, <laughs> my uncle, then Chris, I mean, and I kind of go with it. Um, if you want to sign me up for something, it's probably going to be great <laughs> for my life. <laughs> Write that down. We have it on video. <laughs> oh, no, we have it on video. I, yeah. I'm sure glad so, signed up for the yeah, army. So, <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that would be, but there would be some really good hair there, maybe. But um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I worked with him, and then I he would travel a lot, so I would travel with him, um, doing you know his color work and wig work, and well, sometimes choreography and wardrobe and makeup, uh, and if you needed another haircut, I was a model. You know, it's all the things <laughs> you have to do at a hair show. <laughs> That's awesome. So, how long have you been with uh, with the Redkin team? Um, twenty nine years. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah, I started when I was um, five. So, <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> Good. We're really early here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. What was, um, what was your, like, your, did, did you have to do uh, a lot of the grunt work and stuff? I know you said you followed Chris around, but, uh, you know, Cr Chris made a pretty big impact on Redkin. Did you kind of have to start at the bottom and grunt your way through? Oh, oh, definitely. I am, um, although, you know, I was very fortunate because I, I did the grunt work for him, uh, um, a, a lot. And I remember going to hair shows and people would say, Oh, I want to be just like him. And I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wasn't going to be me. I was like, no way. I'm not going to be like that at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, back then, you know, he'd take as many models as would show up. Um, and we would work longer and um, earlier and than anybody else. So yeah. And then oftentimes there wasn't any budget for me um, to actually be there, but he needed me there. So I would have a cot with, um, he and his wife, um, in their room somewhere. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was some, yeah. <laughs> I used to rinse perms, um, in the, in the bathtub, you just roll up your pants and stand in the tub and rinse perms while somebody leaned over and, 
um, did that. He was known as a perm guy when I first started. It was kind of awesome. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> he didn't though. talk about that. No, he didn't talk about being the perm guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you do this again with him yeah for sure <laughs> absolutely that's pretty awesome i mean that's an interesting i mean what i know for years and years and even nick arojo is trying to do it now like trying to re re reintroduce the the perm i mean pretty much our entire career it's been dead though you know i mean we've been in the industry almost you know, i guess you know almost 30 years now right 28 29 years and you know there's a little bit of leftover when we first started but you know we just haven't seen it do, do you ever kind of Lori, do you ever kind of see a resurgence in it? Not with all the bleach that's happening, no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of short haircuts coming. <laughs> I tried about, oh, God, when was it about? I, my, my years kind of run together. Um, you know, you're getting old when that all runs together. But um, I, I, I made Joe Blackwell Preston perm my hair with blue and pink rods um, about, I want to say about eight years ago, um, and had a real Afro, um, and it was awesome. I, I, I love, loved it. Um, and I thought maybe I could bring it back then, but no, uh, yeah. <laughs> nobody bought, nobody bit, huh? No, no. Most people just said naturally curly hair. I didn't know. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like I got a perm <laughs> and they were like, you would get a perm who would get, what if you didn't like it and i'm like well then you just cut it off like <laughs> you know i don't know i don't know that is awesome she is right though we are kind of in the, like the we're in like the golden age of the uh, of the bleach right now aren't we like everything like with the yeah. colors or even with the balayage or with everything you know it's like we're it's the golden age you know <laughs> no oxidative uh no, no oxidative color going on these days so you're working with joe now at dop dop Yes, I worked at Top Top for I feel like uh, I think it's sixteen years this this year. Yeah. Oh wow! Good, nice run, man. Love it. I love it. You know, I mean, we have such an amazing team, and you know, Joe is you know Joe is amazing. Um, she's one of my best friends, and and my boss, which is couldn't ask for better than that. Um, you know, she she empowers so many people. And just working next to her for that many years, it's just, it, it's very empowering just to be, you know, just to be there. So, yeah, she's yeah. an amazing woman. We, uh, we met her in the 90s with, uh, we worked at a company, uh, PR Partners, uh, and uh, the owner, Reg Laws, and Joe were really good friends. Yeah, she's um she, she's pretty impressive. We, I can't wait. We got to get her on the podcast is what we got to do. So, Laura, you got to put in a good word for us. Totally done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so so you still work behind the chair? Oh yes, yes. I just changed my life a couple of years ago. <clears throat> um, I mean, I say I have to work behind the chair because I have to have somebody to practice. On, <laughs> right. You know? right. Um, and uh, um, and and I love it because you know you you get to meet so many different people and learn. I mean, I I feel like I have a PhD and in bullshit um you know from being behind the chair and learning so many things from so many different people you know what i mean right. and um but yeah so a couple of years ago i changed my life and i moved across the country to san diego and so now i go back every five weeks and look after all of my clients um in like five days what is that i need i need this story so you live in san diego but then you travel yes. every five weeks back to New York to do. Yes, I have a long. Yeah. How many days? How many days are you in New York? Um, about five days. I work behind the chair about five days. Yeah, long days, but I love it. I love it. Wow, yeah. that's impressive, man. Yeah. What 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 does a typical day look like behind the chair for you? Um, well, I don't really move much from my chair. I, I've taken to um, uh, drinking juices when I'm working because then I can just like, you know, drink while I'm working. <laughs> and, um, um, and my clients are amazing. I mean, I, I have them, um, they pre-book two appointments ahead at least um, so that they make sure they get the times that they want. And you know, New Yorkers are New Yorkers are notoriously um, not good pre-bookers in in my in 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 my world anyway. And 
um, now they're they're very good at doing that. So they pre-book and then you know, if you show up at the salon, because I'm only there for that short of time, whatever you, you show up, whatever you need is whatever you get. Um, so if you're just booked for a haircut, but you need a color and some highlights, it gets done. Wow. <clears throat> just what you need to do, you know. I don't care how long I work. I'm not there for very long. Um, I don't care how long my day is. I'll, I'll keep going as long as you're happy to get your hair done. And I try to stay on time as much as I can. And um yeah, just get everybody everybody in, you know. I just hear I love it. Every client's bringing her a cup of juice. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her hydrated. Right. <laughs> and vitamin packed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only good thing is, you know, hairdressers, we never go to the bathroom. So it's like, kind of, it's, you know, it's good, but you got to eat. Tony, yeah. Tony said, what's a typical yeah. day? You're like, well, I haven't eaten lunch since about 1992. Right. <laughs> <laughs> typical hairdresser <laughs> days, you know. Are you yeah, yeah. are you at a salon in San Diego? No, no. What? I know. What? Is, hold on, I we got to get into this. So, what is your life like? So, so right now you work every five weeks. How do you feel? How do you feel the other? Uh, you know the other the other weeks. Well, I do work for Redken. <laughs> <so> <laughs> <Okay. I, laughs> so Redken keeps me pretty busy. Um, you know, I mean for. For 29 years after joining Redkin and working in a salon behind the chair, I worked for that many years doing like two full-time jobs. You know, you would work all week long and then Saturday you'd take off or Friday you'd take off for a show or a class or whatever. You'd come home Monday night, you go to the salon on Tuesday and then you'd, you know, shampoo, rinse, repeat, right? So you'd, um, I did that for like 29 years, just, you know, at least two or three weekends working for Redkin a month and then working in the salon full time. And I just, I thought, and I was living in New York and I, you know, I love New York, but I didn't love living there. You know, I, I lived in, I've lived in Canada and I've lived in Australia. I moved to New York and thought, Oh my God, this is um, kind of a shock to, to the senses. You know, it's very busy. It's very, um, it's very focused, you know, um, people, they have to do what they need to do. I say the struggle is real there and it was eating me up. And I thought, you know, I've worked so hard all these years and I really want to enjoy life. I look at my mentors and I love all my mentors dearly, but I also see them, you know, 20 years older than me still working their butt off every single day, all the time, not really taking holidays, all these things. And I thought, I love all of you and I'll do anything you want me to do. I'm not afraid of hard work but I don't want to do what you guys are doing. I don't want to work every day of my life. I want to enjoy how hard I've worked. And I think I get that from my mom, like work hard, play hard, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just think, so I decided that I would leave New York. Like I really, really needed to leave there. So I, um, I decided I needed to be near an ocean. I needed to be in a clean city. Um, I needed it to, um, have a good airport and San Diego kind of fit that bill. So I moved there and now I travel probably two or three weekends a month for Redkin. Um, and sometimes I'm gone like from one trip to the next trip. Like I, I will go on the road again on in a couple of days in about four days for about 16 days. So I'm on the road for 16 straight days and then I'll go home and I'll have a week at home where I'm just at home, um, go to the beach every day and go for a walk. I play on some hair, listen to some podcasts. Um, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's amazing. That is amazing. It's really great. Well, first off, bravo. Yeah. So you mentioned Australia. Did, was that pre hair or how'd you get there? No, I went there to, I went there to work. Um, I was working in Victoria and I just needed, um, I wanted to go take a class or do something, um, you know, challenge myself. I was like, I was making amazing money. I was working really hard. I was doing the Redkin thing, but I was like, I need somebody to like push me. And so just so happens, um, one of my other mentors, Benny Tognini from Australia, um, came came to visit. He's best friends with Chris Barron and he came to visit and he, I was like, Hey Benny, 
how about if I come and work with you for a few months? And he was like, okay. <laughs> so I did. And um, after I went for a few months, I came back home and he called me back. And he said, well, why don't you just move over here and, and, and stay? So I did. And I wanted somebody to push me. And I'll tell you, that man, oh, <laughs> just... I loved it. I mean, it was just, you know, I mean, yeah, he just, his mind, like I always describe him as many people have blinders on. And if they're a mentor, they, you know, kind of open up your blinders. Benny just takes them off and says, you won't need those. <laughs> <laughs> how, wow. so how long did you end up working with Benny? Um, just over three years, about three years. Yeah. I so thought when that story started that she was like, Somebody uh, signed me up for a visa in uh, in Australia, so I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, when I grow up, I want to be Lori Sable. Yeah. I mean, that's that is awesome. Careful what you ask. Hey, remember what she asked Benny for? Right. You know? yeah. She said yeah. she loved him, but there was a little bit of regret in that voice as well. <laughs> oh no, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She definitely got her ass kicked though. You could definitely right. see that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'll tell you, but in a great way. So, what yeah. was I mean? Some of those great ways, like what did you um individually? What did you kind of learn, you know, from from Benny and in, in 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 that experience? Um, let's see. Well, I think you know um, he looks at things differently than I think a lot of people look at at things. So, for me to just watch the um how his hands move through hair. I mean, one of, one of my favorite things when I worked with him was, uh, you know, he asked me one day how my day was at the end of the day. And I thought he meant like, did I work? Did I do enough clients? Did I sell enough retail? Did I um, pre book enough people? Um, things like that. And I said, well, it wasn't bad, you know? And so he's like, Oh, okay. And then the next week he asked me again, the same question. And again, I thought he, he was just checking to see how hard I was working. And I said, well, you know, I did a few more clients and I sold a little more retail and I pre-booked most of them. And that, and he was like, okay. And then the same, you know, the next week he asked me the same thing. And <clears throat> finally I said to him, how was your day? And he said, oh, well, I mean, I had to do this Bob and I didn't, you know, I just, and, and so I changed it up and I did it this way and I did this and I did this. And then did you see that guy's haircut and I did this and, Oh, I've never tried it like this. So I did that. And, um, and what I realized what he was asking me every day, every week was, did you challenge yourself? Even if you did the same thing, um, did you do it differently? Um, did you try something else? Um, did you push yourself to just, explore a different way of doing something and I was like oh okay and so I think about that all the time like you know it's I never ever want my clients to sit in their sit in my chair and put their head down you know so that you're going to cut their nape you know because that's where everybody starts in a haircut nope not me if I started one on one side at one point in time then the next time I'll start somewhere else like because I don't want to do it the same. And I, I think that's what I really learned from him is just, you know, doing, doing it differently, trying something else all the time. I love that. It, it just helps keeps you uh, just kind of on your toes, right? It makes you rethink, even though it's the same haircut, it makes you rethink it in a different way because you're starting completely different. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Is that one of those lessons that, um, that you continue to, uh, to pay forward? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a big one for me. You know, I think that if you are really stank, stagnant in what you do, it just means you just need to do it differently. Right. And I mean, I think that's kind of one of those things that everybody says, but I don't think that we consciously think of doing that all the time. So I try to remind people, you know, most of the time I can't even remember what I did the, the last time anyway. So <laughs> I'll do it differently anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new approach altogether. Right. Regardless. Well, that's so true that I I'll have a client. Oh, I loved it last time. Do the exact same thing. I'm like, what the heck did I do? I don't remember what I said. All right. <laughs> you're, you're you're trying to find a I'm like, did we even meet before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at the hair going like, well, what would this look like a half inch shorter? Right. <laughs> like, like, how do I recreate what I did last time? 
That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it's interesting to me that um I'm about to put you on the hot seat here, Lori. Just 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 beware. Uh -oh. <laughs> it, it's interesting that when Lori really lights up, it's when she's talking about her mentors. Like, have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Like, that's when she lights up. That's when, that's when you see that fire and stuff. And like, that's pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to ask her about a couple more of her mentors <laughs> if she doesn't mind. Um, so uh, off air, you kind of, uh, maybe you said it on it. I don't remember. But uh, so we have this, uh, we have this amazing uh, professional crush on, um, on Miss Chris Sorby. So uh, how long has she been in your life? And like, what's that? Uh, what's that been like? Um, oh, it's been amazing. She's, um, I call her my auntie Chris. Um, uh, she, she's like family, you know, um, she, when did we meet? I guess when I moved back from Australia and, um, I met her in Chris Barron's kitchen and we were doing, we were coloring hair, color, um, hair wefts for, uh, the Redkin symposium. And so yeah, we just literally in Chris Barron's um, salad bowls, um, mm -hmm. coloring wefts, and um, and it was amazing. You know, just seeing the details that she has. Um, I think she, the things that she has really shared with me are, you know, to be a strong woman. Um, you know, stand up for yourself, um, but be true to yourself. Um, and then also the details, like everything's in the details. She's she and I get on so well because we're so into like the little, little details, like, you know, and I think that's what makes her work so amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, her work is just so clean, you know, and maybe, maybe that, yeah. maybe that it is that nuance of, of, of the details, you know? Yeah. And when, when, we, when we interviewed her and you, you can just pick that up and very similar to, to the, I guess some of her stories from the beginning uh, talking about Lori about, you know, her and Chris, you know, or whoever go to the bar and they sit around and they talk hair. Talk hair. That's what Chris and Trevor and all those guys did in England as well. They would, after work, they would all go around to a pub, sit around and just talk about hair. Yeah, exactly. I was just, we actually, I asked her about it. Like, can you imagine, Lori, can you imagine sitting at that table with, with Chris, Trevor, and like uh, Robert Labetta, <laughs> you know, like just like what was the what was the knowledge being dropped there? Yeah, right. Uh, same thing yeah. with her. Her table. <laughs> and Lori and Chris. Chris. Right. Oh, so crazy. That's so amazing. That's yeah, just thinking about those like little tables across the world, like these little, <laughs> little pockets, <laughs> like hair pockets. <laughs> it's even. It, it's even. Yeah, where most, most people most people are looking at the table going. Who are those crazy looking people? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Matt and then you're saying, who are those really cool people? I, I want to be, be like with them. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so cool. So, uh, I mean, I guess just even coming up in the Redkin world, like just so how many, just there's so many great artists there and there's just so many great people there. Um, I mean, also Sammy, right? Like how yeah. can we talk about Redkin and not talk about Sammy, you know? And what a great right. dude that is. That is. When did you first meet Sam? I think I met Sam before I moved to Australia. Um, we had been, you know, I was working shows with Chris. Mm -hmm. And so he would be at, at the shows and, and things like that. It, it, I have to say, you know, all the mentors that I've had, and you say, you know, how all these amazing people sit around a, a bar table at different times after a hair show or whatever. I've been super fortunate to be that person that sat at these, at this table with all these people. And, you know, people will say, Oh my God, you know, Chris Sorby. And I'm like, yeah, I made her hair pink once. Oh my God, I would die. And you know, Sam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, you know, whatever. And they're like, um, they're like, Oh my God. And so I'm so fortunate to know these, that caliber of people personally you know like they're like family so it's um it's really amazing um and sam's been such a, he's such a supporter of me but he's also been such a great coach for me as well you know just to to because of the way that he just has that passion to you know um share and everything and anything with people and i think you know <clears throat> being canadian you know 
I came from, you know, you put your head down, you work really hard and you hope anybody notices. Um, and Sam was like, no, 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 no. That's not what you do. You need to, you know, you need to just like, just show up, work, give them everything and then they'll fall in love with you. And I'm like, okay. So he's, it's been really amazing to know him, you know, and see what he's done and who he's become over the years as well. Yeah. That's pretty, I, the, I think the thing that, that the story that sticks the most when we talked to Sam was um, how he, uh, he wanted to be in the crowd, you know, like he, he said, like, you know, he would be on stage and he'd be on stage with other people. And they'd want to go hide in the back, in the back room after they got off the stage. And, and Sammy wanted to go the other way. Like he wanted to go through the crowd. He wanted to interact. And I forget who, I don't, I don't even named him, but somebody was like, are you crazy? You're never going to get to your destination. And Sam goes, exactly. I'm never going to get to my destination. I'm going to be there for the people. And I just like, I madly admired that and, and, and just how available Sam is to, um, to our industry. That's pretty cool. Well, I think you, you, um, you know, when you connect with a crowd and you realize that, um, I mean, they're the reason you're there, right? And um, they just want to, not everybody gets to have the the opportunities. You know, we don't all have the same opportunity. Um, and so if you can share what an experience you had with somebody, something or somebody, then how fortunate is that to keep passing that on? I mean, I'm sure you guys have had this where, somebody comes to you and says, I met you once and you said to me, and of course, most of the time I'm like, oh God, what was it? <laughs> like, I'm afraid of what they're going to say um, because I'm pretty blunt sometimes. Um, but the, um, you know, it's amazing the things that people say and you're like, wow, I'm so glad you got so much out of that. So yeah, I'd be with Sam. Like, yeah, let's go in the crowd and let's see, you know, because they touch us just the same way as we do to them. Hmm. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. That's so great. Um, yeah. So what does Redkin mean to you? I mean, as a whole. Family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, most of my best friends are in, in Redkin or have met through Redkin. Um, and you know, I mean, I spend holidays with these people. I travel the world with them. Um, we've been through good times, bad times, all the in-between times. And um, the best part is that, you know, we can work like a 16, 18 hour day. And then it'd be like, I'm just going to drop my stuff off in my room. Do you want to meet at the bar? Um, yeah. <laughs> and like, how many how many places can you be that you work with somebody for that many hours and you still want to spend more time with them? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I only so <laughs> to me, it's family. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Well, well, speaking of family, I think uh, I just got word that, that, that you guys have an auntie that uh, that's rejoining the team. Um, what's your, uh, what's your relationship like with, uh, with Ruth Roche? <laughs> I've known Ruth since about the early nineties and I, you know, she was definitely a, um, somebody that I aspired to be a little like because she was, she was funny. Um, but she really was such a great educator. Um, I, I remember, I don't even know if I got paid to do the show, but I, I definitely volunteered to go over and work with her in Vancouver, um, at a big show of course, of course, she needed an extra model. <clears throat> she had some cartoon, some cartoon crazy ass wig. Um, and oh, Laurie, can you try this on? Uh oh. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then oh, can you put that outfit on with it? We need one more model. And then you know, thank God my modeling days are over. Let me tell you. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she put me in this crazy um, thing and yeah, um, we became fast friends after that. <laughs> it's. It's been great to see her do all the things that she's done in her career and just kind of follow along behind her and see all of that. And, um, and then have her come, come back to the Redkin family. I mean, Purology was always family anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, you know, to have her back in the black um, <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I hope that means that um, now I get to, you know, I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. Maybe somebody will make this happen. Put us on stage together. 
please. Who, who do we have to call? <laughs> that would be a right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You'd think I'd know the right people, right? <laughs> All right. That's a, that's our hashtag <laughs> challenge, right? So if you're listening to the podcast, then uh, you know, we'll have to do put 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 Lori and Ruth together again. Hashtag Redkin right. at Redkin. <laughs> Everything Redkin. I'll even wear the cartoon wig if I have to. <laughs> hey, Lori, are there, no are there pictures of those uh, of that cartoon wig? Uh, she probably has a, them of, of a real model wearing them. Um, but um, n no, thank God back in those days, there was no, no such thing as social media. Oh, oh, the blackmail that could happen. <laughs> um, yeah. No. I'm, yeah. I'm about to reach out to Ruth right now and make sure that there's not one <laughs> jumping on the in. If there is, then your social media dream is going to come true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's so cool. So, um, so uh, I, I mean, you won a few Naha Awards and stuff, and I, I kind of want to get into that. But before we kind of get into that, like, aside from, like, the Naha, like, what's your, what's your like, proudest moment? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I I think I think proud is kind of a thing. Like I I don't know. I don't think that I often think of myself as being proud of myself. Um, mm. I I mostly consider myself very fortunate. Um, you know. Um, and I think most of the most of the things I think of that in in that case would be two things. First thing would be when somebody comes up to you and says, you said one time, you know, and like I said, sometimes I'm afraid of what they're going to say. Cause man, I've said some really <laughs> crazy things. I'm like, really? I said that. I was like, Oh, Oh Lord. Lord. Filter inside voice. Yeah. Stop. You know, but when people come and say, you know, that you, um, there's a young woman that I met recently and I've known her for a while, but we finally worked together. And I apparently met her at the exchange when the doors opened. And I said, hi, and come on in and welcomed her. And I don't know what I did with her that week. I, I really don't. But she said she was ready to quit the hairdressing industry. And her cousin dragged her to the, um, to the exchange and that, um, being there and seeing people so real that could do whatever it was that we were doing, it changed her life. And now she's a Redkin artist as well. And, um, you know, all these, all these different things to me, I was like, wow. So to know that you can affect people's lives like that, that's probably one of the most exciting things for me. And I know a lot of people will say, you know, it's, you know, those kind of things that people say, but I also think it's also um, when I look at around at my the people that I call dear friends or family, and I look at um, how amazing they are and what they do, and that I get to be alongside them. Um, that's pretty. It's pretty amazing. I'm pretty fortunate in that as well. I mean, sometimes you just got to pinch yourself and go, "Wow, I'm here on this journey. Um, how bloody fortunate am I?" You know. Wow, yeah, and I, I, and and you guys are, and I know you, you know, you give back or, or you invest back into your team, and you you guys throw this uh, acronym around, uh, nice. Can you explain that a little bit? It says it on the hat. <laughs> oh, on <and> your hat. <laughs> uh, not interested enough um, to care, um, and so. Um, or not interested to care enough. Um, so if you, you know, if you're just being nice, it means that you're, you don't want somebody to um, push them. And yeah, I, I tell my team that with Redkin, but also at Dop Dop, you know, like if I'm telling somebody like what happened, like, and so what do you need to do? And, you know, you coach them and things like that. And they're looking at you and, and I say, you know, I'm not talking to you. Uh, we're not talking about this because um, I'm I'm getting on you about something. I'm telling you this because I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't actually tell you. And I think that, you know, um, it's so important to have real people in your life, not to beat you down, but to have real people in your life to go, hey, you know what? This is what you need to do. Um, or you won't get to where you want to go. 
and so yeah that's just what a beautiful soul profound, right yeah, yeah. kind of is i mean it's simple but it's usually the simple things that are profound right yeah yeah, mm, yeah. all right let's go up to the big moments so uh what advice would you give someone that uh or tips would you that wanted to enter an aha like what's worked for you or or what hasn't worked for you or or what have you learned in that journey mm-hmm. um well i think you know you have to um practice 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 practice, practice and then practice some more <laughs> because i think people you know and then you can practice what it is you're going to do and you can practice and practice and then you don't do anything that you practiced <laughs> but because you practiced you knew whether it was going to work or not you know what i mean right. yeah i think um you know um i have you know i get these ideas like oh i kind of storyboarded it a little bit um, and things like that, but I don't get real stuck to the whole storyboard in the in the sense of because I, It's not it's not that um, well I like to say and I just think because it's a saying I'm a woman so I can change my mind, right? <laughs> and so, and it, that works very well for me in the sense that um, You know, I might have an idea coming into something, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen and so you have to be flexible. Um, so I think, but I think if you just try it, it, you know, it doesn't, I think you have to, listen, I think that at this moment in time in our profession, and not to knock social media or anything like that at all, but the world is so fast right now. And we look at things like, I want it right now. I want it yesterday. I want it to happen now. Like, you know, people say, Oh, I want to do what you do. I want to, um, of course I say, be careful what you ask for. But I also think, you know, you have to put in the time and that's what I mean by the practice. You've got to put in the time. It doesn't just happen overnight, but you have to keep trying or it won't, it won't ever happen. Right. So, you know, keep putting in the time, um, but also put yourself out there. Otherwise, that you, you never know, right? And then, of course, you have to have a kick-ass team because, you know, my images will not be the same if I didn't have Babak as my photographer. I had an amazing makeup and um, wardrobe crew. I mean, they made everything look, you know, everything go perfectly together. Um, Pascal and Jeremy and Marie-Laure from Montreal. I mean, you you know, have a great team, but then also practice and, you know, keep trying. So how long did you, um, like, again, I know kind of like as artists, like once we do our, how long did it take you to learn that you don't have to stick to the script or to stick to the storyboard? Like, was that, was that, was that, was that a learned behavior as well? I think I'm pretty flexible in some ways. So I think, um, if something's not going to work, it's just not going to work. Um, but you don't own them. I'm not sure. I, go ahead. No, you don't own that. It's not going to work. You're just like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out something else. Yes. I think if you, you know, you can try something, but you know, it's not always going to go the way you want it to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, <laughs> my career hasn't, I, I wasn't <laughs> going to be a platform artist. I wasn't going to do um, uh, any of that. I mean, you know, um, so <laughs> yeah, um, you can stick to the plan, but um I wouldn't plan too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm scared to ask Lori how she got to the Naha because I'm I'm afraid she's going to say that uh, that Chris just signed her up for it. You know, Chris Barron just said, "Hey, you're doing Naha," and she just, "Okay, <laughs> I'm there." So Lori, you're known as a uh, as a as a colorist, right? And like I like like even a class that I took with you at Redkin was a colorist. How in the world did you win a Naha for haircutting? <laughs> Um, well, funny that because most people think I'm a, a, a colorist, like, like you said, and, um, and yet, you know, I grew up, um, learning the very first Redken, um, when they were developing the first Redken cutting system, which was called compass cutting back then. Um, uh, Chris taught me how, how to cut with that and I, I'm left-handed, so he had to teach me in the mirror. So he said, if I can teach you, I can teach anybody. And so um, 
I'm not sure what he was trying to say about that, but anyway, we'll go back. Um, we um, yeah. And, and so I, you know, I was fortunate to learn design as well as learn color. And when we did our first Naha shoot in 2018, I did the cutting and the color for my first model. And Babak, who is our photographer, said, did you cut her hair? And I said, yes. And he said, so you colored her hair and you cut her hair? I said, yes. He said, but we're entering hair color. And I said, yes. Because Redkin had um, offered for me to enter Naha. Again, yes, you're right, Corey. I was signed up. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm the most fortunate person you'll ever meet. Okay. Um, and so, but they asked me to do, um, to enter hair color. And there was the photographer asking me, like, but you do, you, you cut the hair and you colored it. And I said, yes. And he said, but we're only entering color. I said, yes. And he walked off the set. And I was like, the model and I were like, where did he go? And he went into the office of um, our um, education department and said, she cuts hair. And he said, we're aware. <laughs> and he said, no, but she she cut their hair, the model's hair. I think we should enter her in design as well in haircutting. And they said, okay. And he said, I'm going to shoot haircutting and hair color for her. And they went, okay. And so, um, yeah. So um, I have to thank him a lot for that. You know, I mean, I've taught haircutting at the exchange. I've taught haircutting on the road, um, you know, but like you said, a lot of people don't know I cut hair. And so the fact that he saw something and went to my superiors and said, no, this is what we should do, um, was pretty amazing. So, yeah, again, I was signed up for a Babak signed me up for that, too. <laughs> God, I can't do anything on my own, but it works out really well. For people. Yeah, thank see, God you have all the right people around you. I see, I see the trend. Oh, I'm kind of yes. curious. Is yeah. I'm I'm kind of curious as to um how was the like when he shot it how did he shoot it differently for the cut than for the color um he shot um well we restyled it so that it didn't look um the same as the color and he shot in black and white for design uh like for hair cutting he shot in black and white so it didn't he said I don't want your color to distract from um from the uh, from the cut so he did a little, that was did a little Maddie Conrad uh, technique there Right, <laughs> releasing in black and white, and ha ha yeah. you also won the People's yeah. Choice Award. So not only she won a hair cutting, she won a color naha, she won overall People's Choice Award. Uh, that, not that's, naha. That that's got to be. Has anybody else have, have done that? One cutting has one color has won People's Choice. I, I'm sure they have. I mean, I, you know, I'm not that special. I just you know. Oh, stop. Um, I'm going to sign you up for the special <laughs> club. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been in the special club for a while. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well, we won't say what the special is, but um, yeah. Um, oh, Lori's special. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. This is awesome. So yeah, what was that? What what did that feel like? I mean, the people's choice. I mean, that's like, you know, that just seems like it, it's it pretty was, rewarding. And how was it? Um, yeah. Well, the um, the the amazing thing about it was it was um, they changed it this year, but last year it was just the finalists um, were like when I won, it was just the finalists and and it's funny because I think a lot of like you have to make it to the top five. And then they, and then the day of the show of the awards, um, it's the top five that are voted on again. So there's a first time and a second time and they, um, you know, I, I don't know it. I really didn't think I was going to win. Um, I jokingly said to, um, Suzanne Sturm, who's um, one of my biggest supporters and a great, great um, person to work with she said I said to her jokingly in the morning um, tonight I'm going to double fist normally I hold two beers at an awards program because you know you can never get to the bar at an awards program um, and so you always get two beers just in case you needed to know you always get two drinks um, when you go to the 
friends. And so I said, instead of two beers, I'm going to hold two awards tonight. And she said, okay. And, um, She's like, but you only entered one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so, she, but she said, um, uh, well, after I won the first one, um, for color, um, she actually gave me a beer. So I handed her my trophy. I said, hold that. And then a little while later, she took the beer out of my hand and she handed me back the trophy. And I said, I wasn't done with my beer. She said, I know, but they're going to call your name. And I said, are you sure? And she said, yep. And um, she said, and you wanted to double fist, you need to take both trophies. So then they announced my name. So um, I think the difference between winning um, like hair color or hair cutting and winning people's choice was um, the other two were be voted on by the judges, by people that I look up to people who, you know, are my mentors and things like that, that judge the competition. The people's choice was like, generally people like my work. And I thought after doing hair for about 30, you know, 30 some years now, uh, that was very exciting because I'm like, wow, like they still like me. I'm, I must still be relevant. <laughs> I can keep my job. Fantastic. <laughs> Just in time to quit her job and move to San Diego. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, so it, it was very special, very, very special to have the support of so many people um, was really amazing. That's beautiful. Well, speaking of your mentors, if you um, – you know, like how we talked earlier, I said, you know, Trevor was on my Mount Rushmore and who is on your Mount Rushmore? Hmm. Oh, good question. I have some really great people. It might be a really, we might have to do the Ro Rocky Mountains because I'm going to need a big mountain. Right. <laughs> um, uh, the, well, Chris Barron, of course, uh, Benny Tognini, uh, Chris Sorby, Sammy. Um, who else? Angelo Seminara. Love him. Um, and do they have to be a hair mentor? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'd probably put my mom and Ann Mincy up there. Love. I don't know your mom, but I'm sure I'd love her, but I do <laughs> love Ann Mincy. Yeah. And one day, yeah. one day we're going to bring Miss Mincy onto the podcast because she's just oh, fabulous. No. I think she actually just yeah. Gordon's podcast. Um, that's so cool. So are there any like, um, are there any young up and coming? Uh, oh, Joe Rockwell Preston. I mean, oh. how could I forget my bestie there? I mean, hello. Uh -huh. She'd be, she'd push right into the middle. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I love that. I love that about her. If you missed her, she'd let you know that you missed her too, Laura. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Text and phone call. So, um, so are there any like up and comers that, that, that you follow on Instagram or, or, or people that are, that are coming up in the industry that, that, that inspire you? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, putting me on the spot there to, okay. So I have to tell you that I'm the worst person on the planet because I can never remember anybody's name. And luckily I, um, you know, I do get away with calling everybody sweetie love darling on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> so horrible. Um, let me see. I'd have to think about that for a few minutes. Well, we might have to come back because I'll have to think about that. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, That'll be part two. That'll be part two. Exactly. That's completely, yeah, that, that's completely okay. Well, I'm going to give you, I'll give you a couple names. Do you follow Blush and Maine? Okay. Uh, sorry? Do you follow Blush and Maine? Blush and Maine. No. She just won an AHA this year. She's amazing okay. too. Oh. Uh, okay. Sarah Jane. And then, um, and then Updo Guru is one of our favorites too. And she's doing some really cool stuff with, uh, with bobby pins right now. That's, uh, that's pretty. Oh, I did see something about that the other day and it was, yes, yes. So she's I have to tell you, I'm the worst social media person. I've actually just recently <laughs> hired somebody to do it and they're like, okay, but you have to give us some content. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like what? We'll take a picture, Zabel. I'm like, oh, right, right. Okay, remember, yeah. Remember the so, whole reason you got into hair was to take pictures. Yeah, no, I, I don't think, no. I mean, like I said, I didn't really mean to go get into hair. In fact, in all honesty, okay, you want another sign-up story? So in all honesty, my very first job, I got out of cosmetology school, and this guy called a friend of mine who he'd met he wanted to hire, and he said, oh, do you know this girl, Lori Zabel? 
She's like, yeah, she's right here. She's my roommate. And he's like, oh, right. So he offered me a job because my teachers at cosmetology school told them that they, that he should hire me. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I've never done anything for myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> on, that note, <laughs> on that note, on that note, Miss Laurie, <laughs> I think we're going to name this just sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the name of the podcast. Yeah, I like it. Just sign right. me up. <laughs> That's so awesome. Laura, thank you so much for hanging out with us for this hour and um and 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 giving us a, a little a little bit of your story, even if um if, I should have never asked her to come on the podcast. I just should have told her she's gonna be on it. Right. <laughs> just sign her up to come on. Um Laura, thanks again. Great. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. And uh Thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for having me, guys. Please do me you. Hey, hey, so there it is. Hey, this is a message that um, we've been trying to bring, I don't know, for the last couple of months, actually since we started the podcast. Hey, so if you like the podcast or if you find that it's useful, please, please, please leave us a review, a five-star review on iTunes. Um, leave us a rating and a review. But if you don't like it, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, totally forget about this message. We also want to thank Sarah and Blaine from Pretty Gritty. Uh, Sarah and Blaine, they are a band out of uh, Portland, Oregon, and we just want to thank them very much for allowing us to use their song, Pleased to Meet You, on our podcast. Um, that's cool. I think you can find, actually you can, you can find their music on, um, on iTunes. Peace and hair grease. <laughs>